Okay, so how does D start? Well, following good ancient Near Eastern treaty protocol, we talked about that last time, it starts with the preamble. Uh, what is this thing that we're about to read? Well, these are the words of Moses' speech to Israel. That's, that's, what we're, that's what this text is. And for the sake of, for the sake of fun, I guess, I'll stop here just a moment, for a moment to note that this verse, Deuteronomy 1.1, is one of the verses that historically was a, uh, a reasonably well-recognized indicator that Moses didn't write the Pentateuch. Uh, Moses said these words to Israel where, according to this uh, verse, on the other, the other side of the Jordan, uh, the other side from where? Well, if, uh, if the other side, if Moses says these words to Israel on the east side of the Jordan, uh, then, uh, then the other is said from somebody standing on the west side of the Jordan. So whoever wrote this is standing not where Moses was, but where Israel is now on the western side of the Jordan River. Uh, and you know who never got to the western side of the Jordan River? That would be Moses. Uh, so when the text says, right, this is what Moses said on the other side, it's presuming a, uh, an authorship and a readership that is on the side that Moses never reached. Um, which is really, I mean, I don't get hung up on this, but uh, it's a reminder that the Bible never says that Moses wrote the Pentateuch. That's not a biblical claim. Uh, that's a post-biblical claim. And in fact, passages like this are almost like uh, perfectly happy to explicitly say that he didn't. Um, right? when, when there's no a priori claim that Moses wrote it, uh, then you read verses like this. It's like, oh, yeah, they, of course, they're just admitting they, they never thought that. And there's no reason to think that, that they would say otherwise. OK, so what we're going to read in Deuteronomy are Moses's words. But then like almost instantly, you get this very weird little digression. Uh, so these are the words of, that Moses said, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, by the way, uh, from, uh, from uh, Kadesh Barnea to Horeb, if you take this certain road, uh, it takes 11 days. Why do I care? Why do I care how long it is between Horeb and Kadesh Barnea? <laughs> right? uh, why are those, well, like, why are those two places important? What happened there? Uh, according to Deuteronomy, as it will go on to tell us, uh, Horeb is, of course, where the Ten Commandments were given, but also where the golden calf was built. And Kadesh Barnea, well, that's where the spies were sent from, but also, as part of the spy story, where the people were condemned to wander in the wilderness. So those are the, the two poles of Horeb and Kadesh Barnea. It's the golden calf and the spies. Now, these are, of course, really famous stories um, uh, to us as, as modern day readers. What might not be clear uh, to everyone is that when we encounter those stories, the golden calf in Exodus and the spies in Numbers, uh, when we encounter them in our text, they are actually from different sources. The story of the golden calf is from E, and only E knew that there was such a thing as the golden calf or that ever happened. And the spy story uh, is a combination of J and P, uh, but E doesn't have any idea that there were spies. Which is to say, J and E and P all know that Israel had a big bad moment in the wilderness. There's the golden calf for E, and it was the spies for J and P. But no one ever thought that Israel had two big bad moments in the wilderness. No one, that is, except for Deuteronomy, which takes the golden calf from E and the spies from J and tells both of those stories. Right? It's the first one to take both of the stories and tell them uh, together. And now D has Israel with these two terrible moments of disobedience and amazingly tells us right at the beginning of the book that these two worst, lowest moments of Israel's sort of life as a nation took place almost unimaginably 11 days apart from each other. It's, a, it's, it's really, it's an incredibly subtle moment, but I think it's also a revealing one. Right from the very beginning, D is setting us up to see just how bad Israel has been. Not just golden calf bad. Not just spies bad, but both bad, both within two weeks bad. 
And that's where, where D begins. Now, once the preamble is done, uh, this is what we're about to read, we move to the historical background. How did we uh, get to this moment uh, where we're standing here right now on the, uh, on the, in the plains of Moab about to cross into Canaan? How do we get here? And so there's a, there's a little historical recollection and the most important story to be told, at least the first big story to be told, is the one we get here uh, in the first chapter, which is the story of the spies, which is an almost an almost note for note retelling of Jay's spy story. Uh, why is the spy story so important? I mean, after all, there's like lots of disobedience in the wilderness. Why the spy story as the, the central one? Uh, it matters uh, for Deuteronomy's case because it's the best model for the moment Israel finds itself in now. Back then, back in Numbers, they had, they had gotten to the edge of the promised land. They were about to enter it and they lost faith. Where's Israel now here in Deuteronomy? They're at the edge of the promised land. They're about to enter it. And so the lesson is clear. Right? Don't make the same mistake again. The spy story, of course, is also the rationale for Israel's entire time in the wilderness. Right? It's their punishment. And D, as we'll see, loves to talk about the wilderness. If Israel had obeyed, had just obeyed way back then in, in numbers, then there wouldn't have been any wilderness wandering. And presumably these laws, the ones that Moses is about to deliver now, would have been delivered then. You know, if they had spied out the land and been like, all right, we're all in, let's go. Moses would have been like, all right, I got some laws for you then. Um, but, but instead, here we are now. So in a sense, this is, Deuteronomy is really a new beginning, right, after the 40 years of wandering. Uh, and telling the spy story at the beginning reminds us of that new beginning.